Hey guys, Tomboy61, and today we have a review of the Weimar, the Weimar, whatever you want to call it, uh, what is probably going to be one of the most influential ships in this game for this update and the foreseeable future. This thing is incredibly powerful. We're going to be going ahead and covering our build, the mods we're using, uh, all of that, then we're gonna go ahead and show off a game. So if you're interested, just uh, stay around, stick around. So first things first, let's go ahead and talk our commander. Now, there's gonna be two options you can really run for commander. I think um, the one I started off with and the one you'll see me use during the gameplay that is featured at the end of the video, I was running Hipper there. I think uh, Azur Lane Hipper is a fa fantastic choice. She's a uh, hybrid commander. Our inspirations are going to be same on both commanders that I'm recommending. It's going to be Kuznetsov for extra range and Mimbelli for extra reload. And then I really liked uh, Hippers in being able to run Ingenious while not losing out on the Igniter and getting a couple of perks from each sort of tree of the German cruiser line. That's really why I went with Hipper here. The alternative one, and if you don't have Hipper, the one that uh, I'm probably sticking with uh, a little bit more is going to be Von Mueller. Von Mueller is uh, very powerful. Uh, he's, what I'm running with him, same two commander as the Inspirations. Base trait helps boost the speed, which is nice. And then the build I'm running with him is gonna be Beyond Range, Igniter, Valicious, and Steer Clear, along with Refill Station, just to help out with even more range when you're nearby uh, friendlies, which you will be in the beginning of the match, and it does really help out that extra 10% range can really uh, assist in being able to reach out and touch some people. As far as mods go for the ship, the three mod slots I'm running, Aiming System Mod 1. In the second slot, I'm running Propulsion Mod. I started with Steering Gear Mods, but I, this thing just accelerates just a little too slowly for me. Um, and this is an HE spammer that you will be more playing uh, island hopping than you will be out in open water. It can be done out in open water, but I definitely enjoyed more of the island hopper style of play style in this thing. And the propulsion mod was just more necessary for that. Though I know some people are recommending steering gears and I could absolutely sing that. And I'm even using steering gears in the second mod slot. So you could go st double steering gears. I just thought this was a better way to bring out a more overall balanced uh, maneuverability style out of this ship. As far as consumables go, in the first slot, we have the damage control party. It's uh, gonna last five seconds and it's gonna take 60 seconds to reload. Then in the second slot, you have a choice between sonar and uh, enhanced AA. I would not recommend running enhanced AA. This ship doesn't have the best AA to begin with and to double it isn't that great of, of a boost in my opinion. Uh, and then the sonar, well, it's German sonar. So it's really, really good. And it's, you know, just a uh, very effective three point uh, kilometer detection uh, of torpedoes, 5.4 of ships. It's gonna last 116 seconds. Reload time on it's gonna be 180 seconds and you're gonna get two charges of it. Then the last thing is going to be catapult fighter, which will get used fairly often more as a spotting plane rather than uh, to fend off aircraft carriers, though it can definitely be used with that, because as we said earlier, not exactly the best AA on this ship. So that is one very nice skill. So that is the build we are running. Let's go ahead and start running through those stats. Hit points, 32,000 hit points, 13 uh, armor thickness between 13 and 150 millimeters. Let's go ahead and bring up that armor view now. So as we can see, it is essentially a York class. That is what this is, it's a York class with Nuremberg guns is the idea of this ship. So the front is the usual very squishy York class of 16 millimeters, something that any battleship will be able to overmatch you from. Um, and then that mid deck is gonna be about 25 millimeters. And that lower deck, if you can get shells to bounce, it is fairly thick down there, uh, up to 80 millimeters, but that is more luck than skill in getting someone to hit the very bottom of the deck and it being properly angled. Uh, mainly you're not gonna wanna get hit in this thing because it hurts real bad. That is probably the biggest weakness of the Weimar is just how flimsy it is. As far as torpedo reduction on the ship goes, you're looking at a 10% torpedo reduction, which overall is not too bad. Main battery, this is where this thing shines. Four three-barreled 150 millimeter guns with 
our build uh, running Mueller, you're looking at 17.4 kilometers of range with a reload time of 4.7 seconds. That gives you 153 rounds per minute. That is ridiculous. 180 time on those guns. The only other kind of downside to these things, 23.7 seconds. HE damage, 1700, giving you a DPM of 260,000 with a 10% chance to set fire, which uh, if you do the base, like napkin math, if you have a full salvo, you, are, you have a very high chance to set a fire with each salvo. AP damage, 3,750 giving you a DPM of 573,750 DPM. Absolutely insane when you can get the AP to work for you. And usually you can, it's German AP, it's fairly good. Uh, you may stick to uh, HE a lot, but the AP will perform when you need it to. Secondaries does have four two barreled 105 millimeter secondaries with a range of 5.2 kilometers, a reload time of 3.3 seconds, and they'll do 1200 damage with a 7% chance to set fire. Not the greatest secondaries, but they have decent range and they'll do okay by you. Like, it's nice that this thing has secondaries. I don't feel like it really needs it given how quickly the main batteries do fire. Torpedoes, just like the York, it has uh, two launchers on each side of the vessel in uh, in their triple launchers. Reload time on those torpedoes, 68 seconds with a damage of 13,700. Uh, detectability on them, 1.3 kilometers and a speed of 64 knots. The only downside to them, six kilometer range, but really you're gonna be island hopping with this thing. So they're very much uh, point defense torpedoes is the idea with them. They, they are absolutely there to uh, get someone who's trying to come around on an island and you're gonna be able to uh, torp them with them. And that's that's the whole point of them. AA on the ship, as we were talking about earlier, uh, not very impressive, only 3.5 kilometer range, which is extremely short. Minimum damage of it, 45 DPM, with a max damage of 115. Uh, there are some rings, a lot of like, most American cruisers do more than that in just one ring of AA, nonetheless the four rings that make up the Weimar's AA. The overall AA on this ship, not impressive at all. Do not rely on it. You, uh, I think that is another weakness of this ship, but given um, how often we see carriers, especially after their recent nerf, I, I don't find this that being too big of a threat for this ship. Max speed of the vessel, we have it at 32.9 knots with a turning radius of 650 meters and a rudder shift time of 4.9 seconds. Concealment, 12.4 kilometers by sea, 7.8 by air, and 6.4 while firing in smoke. Overall, Weimar, excellent ship. Uh, it was never really built, but just the concept of it is that York, uh, that tier six York ship with the Nuremberg guns is the best way to think of this vessel. And with all that said, let's go ahead and dive on into a game with the Weimar. So here we are on north, we're in the center cap. So we are gonna go ahead and try to uh, play the center cap. I really enjoy playing center cap on north. It can be a high risk sort of high reward, but given the Weimar strengths of kind of being island hopping, being a little nimble, uh, I think it plays to this ship's strengths overall. Also, a lot of times you don't get a lot of enemy contact down in B just because it tends to be that people kind of split one way or the other and go either to A or C. So being able to uh, kind of put pressure in B and make the cap does both benefit your team. Also, it does usually provide you some angles that you usually wouldn't use. Now, as I said earlier, we are running a Zer Lane Hipper at the moment, uh, just to give that, uh, just to have ingenious, because when you're starting out with a ship, you, you are definitely kind of relearning where you are and are not safe. And having Ingenious is definitely going to help you because uh, it, it does not stand up well to enemy fire. You you need to be very conservative. Think of this as a, a German Atlanta is the best way to think of Weimar overall. Um, and you will do just fine. I do have to say Weimar has quickly become my sort of credit earning ship. I've, I've gone ahead and just kind of abandoned my Atlanta because Weimar has been so great. Anyways, Belfast pops up there. We see him turning uh, broadside, so we're gonna go ahead and flip over to the AP, see if we can do any AP damage, but we're not gonna get reload in time before he gets behind that island. But we're gonna go ahead, kind of slow on down, 
see if we can go ahead and engage the Southern Dragon out there. Interestingly, Southern Dragon not running the the Camo so That's that's a player who just really likes the Miyoko, which I do appreciate them for. Anyways, Belfast comes back around the corner. We see that we are going to have a little bit of trouble as he turns in, so our AP shells are not going to start hitting again. So we start flip over to HE. We see he has gone ahead and decided to pop his smoke, but he is well within our sonar range, which means we are just going to bully him with our sonar, and he is already hurting real bad. Once we eliminate him, uh, we're gonna be pretty clear in this cap, and we're not going to have to really worry about uh, about anyone else, especially because he's put that smoke there. Right now, he's he's detecting us from our smoke fire, pound, smoke fire penalty, and uh, we wipe him out right there. We go ahead, drop spot, we can go ahead and uh, take this cap probably with no more worries. That Eastern or Southern Dragon is giving us a little bit more of an issue right now, just because he's being able to uh, lob in some of those shells. We go ahead, push in because we can see, as as we were talking about earlier, the B, t the B squad from the enemy team has kind of abandoned B, right? Southern Dragon was part of that team. He's gone kiting away because that's what his strength is. And we can see there are two very, uh, divisive sides of the map right now and we can go ahead and get beautiful angles on one of, on either side this little ledge off to the right hand side is nice and low which means we will be able to shoot over it we're just looking for that that signal that we're going to be able to shoot over we're going to hit the reverse sign right there and now we see budione is sitting just flat broadside so flip over from he to ap First salvo of HE is still in the air. I think he's aimed down sights, not paying attention too much. We're just a couple seconds from being able to hit him. Aim a little bit higher just to help out with that. And uh, boom, there we go. Four or 5,000 a salvo right here. And this is the beauty of Weimar. Just look how quickly we've melted that booty on uh, Three salvos in, what, 12 seconds total? And he is all the way down uh, as far as... As hit points go, he's down to a third of his health. And that's that's the strength and the beauty of Weimar right there. Uh, it is an extremely powerful and extremely strong ship. Southern Dragon has uh, turned, stopped from uh, driving far away from the captain and has started to move horizontal on the plane. So we're going to end up spotting him. We're going to start dueling. This is one of the weak sp spots of Weimar. We have this great range, but uh, you can see... If the enemy decides to maneuver at all, the shells do keep a decent velocity. It's just when you're at 17 kilometers, even 16 kilometers, like we are right here, uh, any sort of maneuvering by the enemy is going to allow them to dodge. And that's exactly what you would expect. It's just like Atlanta or any of those other ships. We've gone ahead, reversed. Really decent reverse speed, by the way. 20 knots in reverse, which uh, feels quicker than like most other ships when you hit in that reverse speed. But... Uh, I do, I do really appreciate it. At this point, we're seeing we're still starting starting to lose C, and at and we kind of have to make a choice: do we want to go to A or do we want to go to C? At this point, I'm saying mm, I'm feeling more towards C just because of the enemies we know are over there. They're going to make for an easier uh, target at first. Once we clear out C, hopefully our team able is able to loop back. Additionally, C is the only capture point that the enemy currently has. So if we can push in and take that, uh, we'll eliminate the enemy team's ability to earn any more caps, which will be very useful for us. We can see enemy enemy team ha also has a Weimar uh, who is going to be pretty much at our max range. And as we were talking about earlier, it does get difficult to engage ships when they are out at that max range. So instead of the frustrating thing that we'll be engaging another Weimar, we're gonna go ahead and take the option to help out down at sea, surround these guys, especially because the majority of them have kind of gone into the cap. So uh, pushing up here means we're going to be able to get some pretty decent crossfires off on them. Southern Dragon sailing somewhat broadside. We're gonna flip between AP and HE. And once we start seeing some other vessels, we'll flip over and start firing at him. But he's our best option right now. Bovoy, let me tell you, these Russian ships just melt under HE. Look at that, how quickly all of that health is just disappearing and melting away. Uh, we miss a lot on that salvo, only getting four hits, but the Bovoy just, like, there are sometimes you just looking, you're like, oh, 
that melted way quicker than I was expecting it to. We'll, we'll take the win, but, you know, it's great. Anyways, Bovoy goes down. Uh, Southern Dragon pushing around the island now, checking to see what we can do torpedo-wise, seeing if we can help protect our destroyer that is down there. Um, waiting on him to come around the island. We flipped over to AP because looking at the map, he looks like he's going to come somewhat broadside to us. We see uh, we have a good torpedo launch angle on him. Fire our first salvo away. Speed up. Try to get the turn out. That way we have, uh, we're able to sail away and kind of angle away from him, giving us the best way to sort of avoid his torpedoes. We get picked up by his sonar. We start picking him up on our sonar because we know Miyoko's, uh, a.k.a. the Southern Dragons, do have a sonar ready to go, and we want to be able to avoid him. He's, of course, able to avoid our sonar or our torpedoes because he's running his sonar, but we are out spotted right now. Bouncing a couple of shells here. We just need him to angle over just a little bit more so we can start getting those pens. We get a couple of pens right there, and now it's time for this Southern Dragon to go down. Get two Citadels right there, finish them off with this last salvo, and boom, that's three ships down, and there are two remaining ships, which means we are totally on the Kraken Hunt, our teammates getting C, so we're going to start steaming our way towards A. And uh, I think while we do this little steam, we're going to go ahead and talk about the Weimar. It's incredibly powerful, guys. It is... Um, it might be overpowered. I am i don't know if it should have been a Tier 7. I don't know uh, if they should have had more downsides for it. But I feel like this is either A, a prime example of power creep in this game. B, um, the... I, I, I don't know. It... If you, if you like cruisers, if you like light cruisers, if you like that fire spammy uh, style of gameplay, this is the ship for you. It's 12,500 doubloons. Um, we know Wargaming doesn't like to nerf things, right? We, we know they don't. So I don't know what they are going to do with this thing. Yes, it has a moderately high skill, skill ceiling. You can't go charging, uh, you can't go charging into a cap with it. You, you need to play back a little. But beyond that, this thing prints credits. It is absolutely a powerhouse. I can't believe it can go up against tier fives. It it does not feel fair to go up against them in this thing. Um, I don't know what they are going to do. I don't know if it's going to be a sort of a short sail sort of ship where it's up for a week, two weeks. Uh, once they start getting uh, data back and they go, oh crap, it is that powerful. They pull it from the shop and never to be released again until three years from now in a Black Friday crate. Uh, but this ship is is one that you are going to hate to see on the enemy team and love to see on your team. It is. It feels like when Atlanta was new to the game, if you know what I mean. If you're, you've been around that long, when Atlanta was as powerful as it was, as, influen as influential as it was, it feels like that, except this thing outranges it, uh, can hide behind the same islands, and does more damage. And has quarter HE pen. Yeah, because it's a German ship, HE pen, quarter pen. Like, this thing is absolutely crazy. Um, I, I, if you, if you like ships, if you want ships, now, now is the time where if you were thinking about uh, buying a, a tier six premium ship, this may be the one to go for. Um, like I said, I don't know what they're going to do, if it's going to get eliminated soon. Also, we take out the other uh, Weimar right there and we are up to four and now we are just hunting this Benson for our Kraken. But yeah, that's that's my little rant on this thing because it is it is insanely, insanely powerful. Um, and yeah, it's, it's I started playing it today. I haven't stopped. Um, I've added a credit booster to it. I've added just a ship, uh, the regular like added speed boost because I want just a little bit more speed out of it. And that is, it's going to be definitely my credit earner because I haven't earned under um, half a million and I'm averaging around, yeah, like half a million to 700,000 credits a game in this thing. Uh, it's absolutely gross. Anyways, Benson is over there. Uh, we, we killed that other Vimar. We are now, like I said, on the hunt for our Kraken. And this is going to kind of show off just how difficult it can be. We're... we're we're trying to realign our shot after each time, trying to figure out and just play to the Benson. Um, just get these little ticks of damage here and there. He's running 
straight for the edge of the map because at this point it is four of us versus him. Uh, we either kill him here or shortly later with us having the three capture points, we will uh, overtake him on points and it will be a very quick and uh, very painless uh, victory for us. But for me, I'm on the Kraken hunt. I want a, a Kraken in this beautiful, shiny new ship because uh, I'm sure Meta Jerk will say it's a Kraken printer because it absolutely is. It The way it does damage, um, the way you can play it in the back line is just absolutely gross. And uh, this is us just hunting, just trying to figure out just how, how much more angle we have to give to try to hurt the Benson. We're just falling short just that little bit more. But at this point, our aim is right on that, uh, on the mark right there on the map border. He runs out of steam. We finish him off. That's the match. I think we end up with 29,000 uh, XP as our base XP score. It's fantastic, guys. Weimar is a ship that you need to be on the lookout for. Uh, shoot it as soon as you see it because it will absolutely tear a team apart. Guys, if you like the video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. See ya.